one day in the spring, I mixed this blue color of paint and the next week we were at the ocean. I saw that color in the sand being reflected by the sky. I feel like I had never seen that color until that moment in the natural world. It was a very intriguing, passionate moment for me as an artist to have that experience. All of my work derives from nature in one way or another. The trees and the sky and the water, raindrops, violets, a blade of grass. I really am exploring in this current series a lot of those very small, overlooked details. To be a good artist, you have to want to get better. I went to college for fine art, and I had never oil painted before. The first teacher very much was set in her ways about how painting should be and what you should do as an artist, and really didn't allow you to be yourself and express yourself through your work. The lack of a mentor in college along with the guidance counselor telling me I can't make a living being a fine artist, solidified that maybe this was not the path for me. Ten years after, I was a manager of a cosmetic department and oversaw 55 employees. Even when I wasn't there, I was thinking about what needed to be done or who I needed to talk to. It was a very taxing position. And so I was trying to look for some type of release. I just started sketching and I started painting. It just felt right. It felt like this is what should have been going on the whole time. So I thought, I'm just going to keep going and really hope that maybe one day I will be able to show in a gallery. It's not talent, it's hard work. That's the thing that I think that a lot of people forget. Like, that's the reason why Carlisa started five years ago as painting beautiful paintings at the time, now paints these incredible, amazing pieces of pop surrealism that like, blows my mind. I see her down there in her studio, day in and day out. That's hard work. She paints eight, 10 hours a day, and it seems like there's a kind of a boundless well of desire to paint, to desire to express yourself that way. My first gallery experience I was lucky enough to have here in Seattle. It was the first piece that was exhibited for sale. Her talent was so clear from the very beginning that I wanted, I, w I wanted her to, to know that everybody else saw that the talent was there. We were walking to the gallery and I was very overwhelmed. When she walked in the door, I wanted her painting to be sold. I looked to the left and my piece was displayed prominently and it had a red dot, which means it's sold. Carlisa standing there hands over her mouth, shocked and stunned, because, I mean, opening night, like the emotions that she had wrapped up just in that one piece. I think it's a beautiful painting, and I love it. It was as much about a validation of her career choice as as much it was about that particular painting. The ultimate goal for me when I started was to get into a gallery, just a gallery. So. <laughs> <laughs> to have that happen, to have the painting sell, was like, okay, now, yeah. <laughs> now where do I go from here? We live in this weird era right now where we can get instant feedback. Like, I can post a video on YouTube. Tyrant, come on.
Come on, roll over. I could post a, you know, picture on Instagram. I could write about something on Facebook. It's easier now than ever before as a creative to get your work out there. But creatives are still terrified of getting their work out there. I think people are scared of what the reaction will be by the viewer. And I think that pushes them towards that perfection. The thing that keeps them in that, especially in that cyclical loop where you're constantly revising, you're never actually releasing, is that fear that somebody's gonna say, this is wrong. As an artist, you question everything. Am I going in the right direction with my work? Is this really true to who I am? Is this flower the right color of pink? Once I actually started thinking seriously about it and knowing that this was the direction I was gonna go in, there were some really, really tough, tough days. I remember three years ago that there was a point where I was like, I don't think I can do this. I'm never gonna get to where I want to be. I was feeling very close to throwing in the towel. I think there's two aspects to that quest for perfection. So there's that kind of practical technique, like getting better at your craft. Did it? Then the other part of it is growing your mind's eye so that you can actually see where your designs are flawed. And that is a lot more challenging. Everybody hates the stuff that they've done previously, right? But it helps build you to what you are. I couldn't write book two unless I wrote book one. I couldn't write book one unless I wrote the four failed manuscripts that never went anywhere before that, right? And I think people give up way too early. There's something right now, and maybe it's just the American dream, that success just seems to come to people, and it, success doesn't come to people. Like it's, It is a fight, and you have to go out every single day, and you have to punch fate in the mouth and you have to just keep working at it and I think that is that is the hardest challenge. I remember a very specific moment where I felt that I, I couldn't go any further. You had so thousands probably, and thousands of people that told you they love your work. No it was before it was before social media. I think what you were saying earlier you still doubt like what you're working exactly. on. You yeah. still make comments about no, this doesn't have a cute animal. Like, but the difference is now is you've learned to accept that as just part of the, the process, right? right? Just like I have to accept that I'm going to release right. a book and now I have to wait for people to actually read it before yeah, they tell me if it's good or not. Yeah, that those feelings are normal. Yeah, those moments are the things that push you into that next level as a creator, as an artist. feel my work is never good enough. It definitely can be very, very challenging to have that constantly at the back of your mind. That's pretty close to being perfectly lit. There's not much difference between you. There's only a few point spreads difference between it. But when we find that when we go to color edit, it's just perfect. turning point for me was realizing that my work will never be perfect, which is okay, because 
I feel like if I actually hit that point with my painting, there's no road left for me to go as an artist. Once you feel comfortable in your own skin as an artist, you have a lot more freedom to take your work to places that you wouldn't have before. Where I am today, I don't know if I would describe myself as more successful. I don't ever see success as this obscure thing that's going to happen to you one day. People would say, well, Van Gogh was a very successful artist, except he wasn't in his lifetime. All of the, the kind of measures that we normally bring to the idea of success, which are mostly financial, are very challenging. If you don't look at financial rewards, then you're kind of left, well, is the person happy? And is the person finding satisfaction with their work? The first piece I did for the current series I'm working on, I made a conscious effort to challenge myself to have more of a realism aspect. It just feels like a very personal experience you're having with the painting. You're too close to her almost. You're in her personal space and she might not even realize that you're there. We've moved beyond Carlisa doing allegorical fairy tales to something that I think is a little bit closer to her soul. You've come to a point where I think that You've turned a corner as far as like what you're actually sharing with the world. And I think right now, it's not just pop surrealism. It's really hard to label your pieces anymore. For this current series, I was actually able to execute what I wanted to. So and I was able to fulfill my vision. So you feel like you're successful then? With this current series, I, yeah. I do feel like I still have lots of room to grow and I still have a journey. Like I still feel like I'm at the beginning of that journey as an artist. My vision is to constantly be growing and to constantly want the next challenge. For me, success is being able to stand back from the body of work I just completed, feeling proud about it. Every single show she's done has been mind-blowingly better than the last. Every time I think she hits this like new space, she goes someplace even crazier. She's willing to jump out there and be confident. She has those moments of fear like everybody else does, but it doesn't stop her. It's, a, it's hard not to be proud. When someone's like that. Art, I found, oftentimes surprises you. And you don't actually know where it's going to take you until you're there.